the designated driver of my life, she said. I didn't know that. We were sitting by the window watching rich people try to avoid making eye contact with the panhandlers positioned on either end of the street. In between sips of coffee imported directly from a small farm in the lower Andes, Lisa handed me a small bottle of prescription pills. Hold on to it for me. Lisa's asked me for a lot of favors over the years. Is this your? I've decided to stop taking it, she said. I bit my lip. If I really go crazy, if something very bad happens, you're the one I'll listen to, to take them again. I promise. I really don't think it'll happen, and I don't want it to, but you are the designated driver. I put the pills back on on the table in the very middle between us. I'm not sure I'm qualified. Who else? Really? Try a doctor. <laughs> They know my symptoms, but you know me. I looked outside the window. There was a strong breeze blowing and everyone looked cold. Except the dogs getting walked. They always look thrilled to be there. There's nobody else I trust, she said, as much as you. Not after the last few years. I grimaced. When I was a kid, parents put me in therapy because they thought I was a delinquent in the making. <laughs> she laughed. You? Yeah. I didn't know that. Maybe a outlaw poet. I grinned just a little. Not enough. She took the cue. Oh. I didn't know. My therapist, who was really very good, at least as far as a discerning nine-year-old could tell, asked me what it meant to trust somebody. And I don't know why I remember this, but I do so clearly. I told him that I would trust someone who, if they had complete power over me, wouldn't change a thing. They would leave me exactly as I am. She nodded. I looked back out at the street for just a moment. I don't think I believe that anymore. I, I'm pretty sure that misses something important. What? She asked. I thought about it for a while. Can I be honest? She rolled her eyes. Well, obviously. Since you've been on the meds, you've been happier. She pulled back. You really think so? This isn't the first time I've thought it. That's interesting, she said, because I feel cold and dull. Not the person I want to be. But happier, I said. I... And remember, you trust me. Ah, uh, she stopped. She realized, I think, that if she just dismissed me, I'd have an excuse not to hold the drugs for her. Hmm. Maybe, maybe I was happier, she said. But I wasn't happy with myself. I'm not sure I understand the distinction. It's, she stopped. It's about how you dream. Do you really want to get out of control again? She nodded. Control. Happiness. Maybe you're right. There are rooms missing in my head, and it's a haunted house. But that's where I live. I sighed. I can't imagine wanting to be less happy. <laughs> she laughed. Maybe your therapist was that good. Maybe. She picked up the medication and put it back in front of me. 
Maybe I'm wrong, she said. Maybe I don't trust you that much. Maybe what I really mean is that I know you trust me. It can be difficult to tell the two apart if you feel them strongly enough. You need to do this for me. I drummed my fingers on the table. I need to be in control so you don't have to. If you had it in you to lose control, I never could have leaned on you for all those years. Eventually, I put the bottle in my pocket. 